Hypsiziegus almarius, the elm oyster. Now this is a very fitting name, the Latin name anyways, for this because Hypsi in Latin refers to high. And this is where many of these are found. Elm oysters can grow to be quite a large mushroom. Although it's been found growing in August, this is something that's more commonly found throughout the autumn and, and it's depending on where you live, into December. However, although these are found widespread, apparently they're not that common. But in this area where I am, I'm really, really fortunate because if I'm willing to trudge through a meter, which is about three foot high, worth of uh, asters and goldenrods, there are many. Let's see, there we go. We'll go closer to those ones later. Now, this is the one I picked that I was showing you moments ago. And I just want to show you that despite its common name, this is not a true oyster. It's often mistaken for one. Elm oyster gills, as you can see, are closely spaced together and they're attached to the stem. The gills of the true or common oyster mushroom are decurrent, which means those gills run down the stem. Now, elm oysters grow singly or in pairs. And sometimes they grow in small clusters as well, but they're not, I think more often than not, I find them in singles. Elm oysters are ubiquitous on wounds of living box elders. Some people claim that they can actually grow in other deciduous trees as well. When young, the cap is convex, which these are. The upper surface is smooth, Usually they're a lot more whiter than this, but we went through a pretty, uh, well, it wasn't too strong of a frost last night, but a frost nonetheless. And I'm going to try to find another one in here, which I know there's more in here somewhere um, to show you what the stalks look like. They're absolutely amazing. So I've kept walking in this area and it's kind of hard to get through. But I'm glad I have trudged through all this because I have found a lot. Here's some that are growing singly. And let's get around. Look at that. Cool, huh? Just beautiful. This is a small cluster. And let's not forget to look up. And way up there. It's hard to see here, and, but there's a little one just right at the tip there. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get my knife and reach up and get one of these with the thick stipe and show you closer what that looks like. Okay, so I've taken two and you'll notice that the stalk is quite stout. Let me just, uh, there we go. And when you feel it, it is super, super, super dry. It's attached, well, it depends on the specimen. Sometimes it's attached centrally and sometimes a little bit more over to the edge as it is here. Now 
Now, this has really nice flesh. It's great to cut up. You could fry it up. You can dehydrate them. And these are really, really becoming quite popular uh, in terms of buying inoculated logs and growing them at home. So you check that out. Now, what I'm going to do is continue onward and see what else I can find. And then put them all together and show you what a really nice haul of elm oysters look like. Here is one specimen I've cut in half. And you can see how meaty it is. The gills are good as well. So when you fry it up, you can slice these thin with a bit, bit of garlic, some onions, butter. You've got an incredible side dish. Okay, I'm home now. And this is what I gathered. The beginning stages of growth. You'll notice that the margins are curled under. They open up. Look at that. See it's starting to get thicker. And then this one. Now the meat on this one does not look that great. Although once I put a knife to it, it might actually look a lot better. I had to climb halfway up a tree to get this one. So there you go. Elm oysters. Thank you for watching.